A global patent has been awarded to an AI algorithm that helps make robotic knee replacement surgery more accurate and efficient. It was designed by the orthopedic surgery team at Singapore's Alexandra Hospital. About 200 patients have benefited from it since 2023. But what is a robotic total knee replacement and how does the AI algorithm help? The surgery removes a worn out or damaged cartilage and bone tissues from the surfaces of the femur and the tibia. These are replaced with artificial knee joints called implants that are typically made from a combination of metals, ceramic and plastic. Every patient has a unique set of bone and ligament structures that need surgeons to map out in 3D during the operation to find the best fit for the implants. The AI algorithm comes in here to suggest the most ideal option, speeding up this long 10 to 15 minutes process. It also makes it more accurate by computing thousands of permutations to get a precise placement for better patient comfort. And joining us tonight to share more is Dr. Glenn Liao, orthopedic surgery consultant at Alexandra Hospital and house officer Dr. Matthew Ang. Uh, welcome to the program, gentlemen. Thank you for having us. So for a start, uh, Dr. Liao, why develop this AI-driven approach? How does this algorithm uh, address the limitations of manual planning in current surgeries that other solutions can't? As a knee replacement surgeon, it gives me the greatest satisfaction to be able to see my patients have the best quality of life after their knee replacement surgery. Mm. This inspires me to continually search for surgical techniques and strive for surgical excellence. Current robotic knee replacement surgeries <clears throat> have been more common in the past five years. Um, this is, allows surgeons to be able to make their cuts to a more precise level. Okay. However, the manual planning process is currently uh, not automated. This is challenging because for some knees, this would be um, difficult when you consider the multiple positions that they can be in a 3D space. Mm. The knee implant, in this case, this is the femur thigh bone implant, is one of two implants that are usually placed in the knee, can be moved up or down. Mm -hmm. It can be turned in or out. In side view, it can be flexed or extended. Or it can be also internally or externally rotated. So that represents four degrees of freedom or axes that it can move. If you multiply it by two, you have at least eight or more degrees of freedom that a surgeon has to take into consideration during the operation. This can be a very complex process and may take uh, uh, quite a considerable amount of time. So our algorithm seeks to add tech and identify and solve these two issues. Number one, our algorithm is able to consider the thousands of permutations mm -hmm. and within 0.1 seconds, rank them according to the patient's unique specific anatomy and the surgeon's goals. In doing so, we hope to achieve the most optimum implant position that's planned for a patient who is undergoing robotic knee surgery. That's very fascinating. It's made more flexible. And I suppose there were inefficiencies in the past where the older processes may be more time consuming and uh, they were not so precise also. Uh, Dr. Ng, let's bring you in here. Are there risks involved with using this algorithm? Right. So no surgical technology is perfect without risk. Mm -hmm. We have used this algorithm over 200 patients and we are glad to say that we have had no inaccurate calculations and no inaccurately placed uh, robot robotic knee implants okay. within the knee joints. Uh, our, our algorithm actually produces many thousands of solutions, but in the end it is the surgeon who decides on which is the best solution and it is the surgeon who chooses the solution and inputs it back onto the robotic system. Okay. We have checks and balances within our algorithm as well to ensure that in the rare event that there is no solution, it informs the surgeon and suggests ways to correct or resolve the issue. It sounds yeah. like no small feat. Um, what were some of the key challenges when coding and integrating this algorithm for surgical use, Dr. Liang? So, we had to take into consideration a few challenges. Firstly would be the 3D permutations of the implant positions. Number mm. two would be the speed 
that we had to do the calculations in. Number three, the okay. user design and interface. And number four, the clinical ap applicability. In terms of the 3D, we had to um, spatial orientation. We take into consideration the thousands of permutations. Mm -hmm. um, the speed, we had to get it down to something that would make sense in the surgical process. So we managed to, through optimizations and improvements in our algorithm, get it to less than 0 0.1 seconds. In terms of the user interface, it had to and currently does work well in the surgical workflow. And finally, um, the clinical applicability. After rigorous testing in simulations, we then moved on to sawbone models which was successful before we finally used it in actual real-life surgery. Okay, and what safeguards have your team put in place to ensure that the patient's data is protected? Because we're looking at AI systems and these systems, you know, typically require large data sets to improve their accuracy, isn't it? Our algorithm is actually doesn't use any internet connection. It is a purely mathematical algorithm okay. and it actually doesn't store any patient data or transmit any patient data. Mm -hmm. So we are aware of all the PDPA regulations and HIPAA regulations and we're very confident to say that it doesn't infringe on any of them. We want to maintain patient confidentiality throughout the entire process of using the algorithm. Okay, we understand that about 200 patients have benefited from this algorithm technology. Uh, talk to us about the outcomes, the feedback that you've received. So what we are happy to share is that we are able to achieve a high precision mm -hmm. um, compared to manual methods and our patients are able to have their operations done in a shorter duration. Uh, to be able to complete the operation and close up the wound potentially would lead to lower blood loss, reduce the amount of anesthesia use and duration mm. and potentially uh, reduce the risk of infection. You know, especially with uh, conditions like osteo osteoarthritis, you know, that are set to rise because we have an aging population here. Uh, what does this invention mean for the future of orthopedic surgery, Dr. Liao? So, <clears throat> probably means that it can help with increased precision in the planning of implants. With faster surgeries, we'll also be able to impact surgeons and patients alike. Mm -hmm. The ability to use this on a global scale, given our PCT uh, patent that we have obtained, hopefully this will be able to scale to surgeons and patients globally to be able to benefit both groups equally in future. And we understand that long-term studies are ongoing. What does recovery look like for patients uh, after, after their surgeries? Right. So after the surgeries, normally these patients undergo a period of physical rehabilitation. Uh, and usually after a period of uh, perhaps four to six weeks, they'll get regular checkups mm -hmm. uh, under Dr. Liao and other consultant orthopedic surgeons. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dr. Liao, would you like to share more about this? Yes, and uh, so we still undergo the same rehabilitation process. We are hopeful and ongoing long-term studies are being done to evaluate the five, 10-year uh, effects of our algorithm and hopefully okay. we will be able to show good results. All right, we wish you all the best, Dr. Ng, Dr. Liao. Thank you so much for speaking with us tonight. That was Dr. Glenn Liao, orthopedic surgery consultant at Alexandra Hospital and house officer, Dr. Matthew Ng.